How's it going everyone? Data here to walk you through some big news in the NHL 25 world as a new patch went live today as of November 4th, 2024, which comes with some gameplay and game mode tweaks, but also a huge change to coaching in franchise mode in particular as real world coaches have been added to the game. Unfortunately, this patch is not all sunshine and rainbows and still leaves a lot to be desired within the game, but I'll be walking you through it so that you can get a better understanding of what's been fixed and why it matters. If you enjoy the video, please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already to follow along in our NHL 25 franchise mode series, guides, career simulations, and much more. Let's get into it, try and keep this video short and sweet for you. NHL 25 patch blog 3. Hey NHL fans, patch blah 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 releases today, blah blah blah. Let's get into the big thing first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, real world coaches are added to NHL now. Of course, most importantly in franchise mode, as that's where their schemes, their styles matter the most, but also in play now mode or anything else, across all the modes, you'll see those real world coaches added behind the 32 NHL benches. As the announcement says here, we're excited to announce the arrival of all 32 official NHL coaches, along with their unique personalities and strategies they employ in the real world. This coaches update will span across a multitude of modes, of course, with the coaches providing their signature schemes and traits to the league. Now, in theory, that's really cool, and I care about the styles and the specialties, as they'll mention right now for John Tortorella, but I gotta say, it's a bit of, uh, like, who you trying to kid with the attributes, and I'll explain that in a moment. So, for the styles and for the schemes and all whatever else that you want to call, each coach has a slew of attributes that symbolize their real-world strengths. For example, a coach like John Tortorella brings a physical coaching style and specializes in developing veteran players. Additional areas of differentiation, here's my issue include power play, penalty kill, teaching, and influence. These traits will be important distinctions between how teams play and develop. Now, I haven't looked at all 32 coaches yet, as I would take a lot of time to build, to make 32 modes and go in and look at each coach, because we know how fast the NHL 25 menus are, right? But from the coaches I've seen so far, not just the major ones, but guys like you know Sheldon Keefe, all the way to Paul Maurice, John Tortorella, Craig Berube, I haven't seen anyone less than A- in any of the six major attributes, offense, defense, power play, penalty kill, teaching, and coach influence. They're all A-, A, or A+. Whereas previously, when you used to take over a team and you got whatever coach that you got to start the game sometimes it might be that they have ooh, a b minus power play or oh a c plus this but pretty much every nhl head coach that i've seen so far you can correct me if i'm wrong i'm just a few hours removed from getting the information for the first time i've seen every coach with a minus a or a plus i haven't seen anything less than that so part of me says okay that's fine they're nhl coaches but another part of me says, well, then what's the point? I can just get any of them. And there'll be little differences between generalist and physical and veterans and stuff like that. But what really matters when it comes to simulation are the attributes right here. For player development, yes. Are they veteran? Are they um, offense? Are they defense? Whatever. That matters for development. But for simulation, if they're all A minus, A, A plus, it'll be very similar no matter who I have. That's just something I'm noticing when I talk through it. But it's a big plus, absolutely, don't get me wrong, to have the coaches in the game. We've been waiting for this for years. It's been on my wish list and many wish lists for many years now. We used to have it back. I don't know which NHL, oh, whatever it was that we had real world coaches back in when it was dynasty mode. So I'm sure it was something to do with the coaches union or the coaches association. Some sort of agreement couldn't be struck. I get it. But I just don't get why they're adding it now. It seems very un-EA to have a major addition to a game be brought in like a month after release as opposed to holding on to it for NHL 26. If you told me this was a part of NHL 26, I'd say, okay, that's great. But it's already a part of NHL 25, at least in NHL 24, or is it 23? I'm, they're all blending together now. When roster sharing first came out, at least they told us, okay, roster sharing is coming, but it's not going to be out yet. A patch will come in November or December, whatever it was. And that's more understandable. But the problem is now, this new thing has dropped. It's amazing. We want to use it. And if you already have a franchise mode going, you can't enjoy it because it, you have to have the newest roster update to bring it in. Just like when, it, when, when new jerseys get added, if a new jersey is added to a team, you have to use that new roster update to be able to enjoy it. Same thing with coaches. They come with the new roster update, which came at the same time as this new patch. So if you're already in a franchise mode like myself and our Islanders franchise mode on the channel, you can't enjoy it unless you restart your mode. So that's very frustrating. I look forward to enjoying it in the near future but already I waited like three weeks to start my franchise mode so I would get a roster update and now we're over a month from early access back in the end of September 
and now this big thing is dropping. So I love it. I'm not trying to be picky or anything like that. I just question the timing of it and why now. Something must have really changed in the negotiations that they've been having. I don't know. Some breakthrough happened in the in the uh, in the meeting room at EA Studios. I don't know what it was in the conference room. But all that to say, I'm excited for it. I just wish I could use it in my main franchise mode. But it'll be exciting when I can. Now that being said, each coach's actual team history and record will be shown in game and will be updated based on future teams that they may sign with and results within your franchise mode. So that's awesome. I love that. They go back, they give you the history, they give you the record. They're going to tell you the number of presidents, trophies, Stanley Cups, Jack Adams, etc., etc. We'll be able to see each year which actual real coach has won, building storylines with those coaches going to certain teams, not just random generated names. If you see a name, oh, wow, Martin Saint-Louis got fired by the Canadians, not just uh, Roderick LJ. You can actually see, okay, the storylines are being built. Now, who's going to sign that coach? Where is he going? That's fun. That's great. So kudos to EA for that. I just really question the timing and I'd want to know more because it's very, very odd. None of us lost anything that we didn't have yesterday. So it's not like you know, my franchise mode is being forced to restart. But it is kind of annoying that, oh, there's this fantastic feature we've been waiting years for. And I can only use it if I use the most recent roster update. Not any of my custom rosters that I spent the last five weeks building. I have to use the new EA roster update. That's my problem. Now, let's get into the rest of the update. So that's the thought, the, the, the addition of coaching. That's fantastic. I'm looking forward to using it. It's just annoying for people like me. But you know, I'm saying people like me. Imagine people like Vasi. Over on Xbox, you have the roster created by Vasi, Tactics, and Tugi. And they spend like hundreds of hours building that. And then now you have to choose, okay, do I want the EA roster with the real coaches? Or do I want a custom roster that, that has literally had over a month of work put into it by this point? To get those rosters back with the coaches we're gonna be in the month of december by the time we can enjoy both so yeah i just really question the timing i'd want to know more on that now the rest of the updates so for gameplay i don't really do much gameplay in my own world i've been burned too many years in a row but i will read through these fix an issue with player sticks colliding with the puck during stumbles fix an issue when fast forward to a new shift and getting scored on fix an issue when the skill based one timer on I on ice feedback wasn't appearing for skaters with one t zone x factor added additional error to passes aimed directly at the goalie while within close range fixed alignment issues with chop puck to help increase the success rate of chop puck while stationary and skating fixed an issue when a user disconnects in an online game which results in two ai players causing a line change all right fixed a rare issue where cp you may not skate into onto a loose puck in the defensive zone when in position to obtain it yeah a rare issue how about fix an issue that happens once per period no what am i saying that happens multiple times per period and dozens of time per game fixed a ext an extremely common issue where the cpu does not skate to a loose puck in the defensive zone when in position to obtain it let's say that and now i can't wait to see that issue that rare issue being fixed i look forward to watching that rare issue no longer being something ah, i can't wait to harp on that in the next franchise mode sim that we go into i digress fixed an issue that blocked goalies from making certain saves while leaving hug post into butterfly fixed an issue where cpu players with back at your zone ability were not able to execute a reverse hit okay that's good to be fixed fixed a rare issue again this is rare where a cpu player with the puck skated back into their zone when they should be focused on attack <laughs> Oh, that's a, that, I love how every issue is fixed an issue and the two most common that people have been screaming for on Twitter and in um, discussion boards for months and years are rare issues. Again, I'm nothing against EA, but just what are you saying? What are you saying? Fixed a rare issue. So now CPU players with the puck will not skate back into their zone when they should be focused on attacking. I've been going on crazy on that one for years. Just myself for years. Why are you skating backwards? Go! We're down by one in the Stanley Cup final with 20 seconds to go. Why are you skating backwards? That is something that I can't wait to see as well. Fix an issue with skill-based one-timers not triggering one knee down shot animations when successfully timed. Fix an issue where a goalie poke check on a loose puck can cause the goalie to get out of position and miss the puck. Fix an issue where a goalie can overslide their movement when tracking a puck banked off the end boards. Fixed a rare, okay, let's see this one. Fixed a rare animation issue when a skater skates too close to the net and the model looks disjointed. Nah, I wouldn't say that's rare. Again, fixed a rare end of period crash that could trigger 
while shooting the puck at the end of a period. Okay, that, I would say that is rare. Updated players for one three one power play. Updated plays for sorry, updated plays, not players. Updated plays for passive, standard, and aggressive three on three overtime in zone strategies. Okay, so nice to see that. I wonder if it's actually fixed. So I look forward to watching some gameplay and seeing that. Gameplay tuner notes, developer feedback, setting up a perfect skill based one timers, rewarding hockey play. Okay, I'm just putting a little context. Reduced stamina drain on skill based one timer saves and reduced bonus shot accuracy applied to perfectly timed skill based one timer shots. Okay, here we go. Game modes. Here's what we've been waiting for for all you franchise mode fans out there, including myself. Game modes. Added all 32 current NHL head coaches in franchise mode, season mode, online versus, and play now. Lovely. Fix an issue where a player's draft class year value is being reset to undrafted after saving within edit player from the main menu. So I believe that is the issue. In other words, in create a player in the creation zone, you weren't able to put a player's draft year as 2024. So for people who are making rosters like me, for Vasi and anybody else, players who are 2024 draftees had to be called 2023 draftees and then given a four-year entry-level contract instead of three years. So again, there goes all of our custom rosters because now we have to fix that. I'm glad it's fixed, but why did it take so long to get that patch? It's November 4th. Franchise mode. Fixed a crash when editing some generated players within the mode. Yeah, which ones though? Because some weren't and some were. Fixed an issue where gameplay sliders were being reset after playing a game. Good. Fix an issue where players with trade lists could be traded to a team not on their trade list. Yeah, I saw that glitch. If you did it a certain way, back out, go back in, back out, hit a few of the right buttons and you could trade a player to a team that he didn't want to get traded to. So that's nice to be fixed now. Uh, fix an issue where the standings tiebreaker uses regulation plus overtime wins before regulation wins. Okay. Fix an issue where the franchise hub ticker didn't prioritize showing signings during the off season. Doesn't change my life. Fix an issue where the draft pick team ownership shown on an incoming trade offer could show incorrectly during the trade deadline mini game. Okay. I hadn't noticed that either. Fix an issue where the NHL coach card would show entering the AHL coach card from the edit line screen. Okay. Fix an issue where using Sim Intervene could show incorrect goalie stats for that game within the box. Or another one. This has been asked for for years. That's been the last two or three wish lists of mine. If let's say the game has been played and I don't know, 55 minutes have been played in the game and the goalie's been there for 55 minutes, if you jump into the Sim, it'll change it to like 40 minutes played. And if up until that point, let's say the goalie has allowed, let's say four goals, instead of allowing four goals, and let's say the game ends, you jump in, the game ends, they allowed four goals. Instead of the goalie having allowed four goals over 60 minutes, giving them a goals against average of four for that game, it'll be four goals over 40 or 45 minutes, thus giving them a higher goals against average for that game and skewing their actual stats. So supposedly this has fixed an issue where using Sim Intervene could show incorrect goalie stats for that game within the box score. So again, I look forward to seeing that. Improved CPU logic when signing drafted prospects. Okay, that doesn't really tell me anything, but hopefully it means less people being dropped to free agency. And miscellaneous crash and UI fixes. Okay, now this is the big one I'm looking at. Conversations and contract negotiation, because these have been a mess. I These are nice to say. None of them, not, not most of them didn't affect me too much. I will say this has been a big one I was waiting for. This plus the real coaches are two big ones from this patch. And then uh, for gameplay, it's those rare issues where they don't skate to the puck and the rare times that they skate backwards instead of attacking so those are so far four big things that this patch has brought so conversations and contract negotiations fix an issue where an empty text string could show when assigning long-term goals to some defensemen fix an issue where morale values could sometimes reset when impacted by conversations fix an issue where the user could add clauses to a two-way contract offer within the negotiations after re-entering the conversation okay fix an issue where the previously discussed contract reset to below league minimum when re-entering negotiation after a player declines an offer all right Fix an issue where the player's new interest in an organization was not being calculated immediately at the time of an organizational persuade succeeding or failing within a contract negotiation. That's very nice. Fix an issue where a player's organizational interest would not decrease after failing an organizational persuade. So that I didn't mind that not happening, though. If the guy is not interested in joining my team because we're not a big market and I tell him, well, but it would be nice to come to a small market, wouldn't it? And he says no. His already low value should stay low. It shouldn't get even lower. How have I upset him further? If he already didn't want to sign in a small market, how did me trying to tell him about the pluses of a small market make him even more angry? I guess, but... Pff. Fixed an issue where some playoff series focus options were not causing negative impacts, okay? 
fix an issue where the player's contract interest remained high when evaluating low salary offers. Ooh, that's not good for people who are trying to cheese the system a little. Fix an issue where a contract promise could fail if a player was playing higher in the lineup than promised. So a contract promise could fail if the player was playing higher in the lineup than promised. Okay, so no longer will a player, let's say, who you're promising second line minutes to be angry because you're playing them on the first line. Great, that's a big one right there. Again, I haven't experienced these too, too much yet in my franchise mode because I'm still earlier on in my our franchise mode series, but I was seeing a lot of people talk about that in our Discord server. We're over 700 in there talking franchise mode, link in the description, and I was definitely hearing that one. So good to see this one fixed. Added a five game buffer from the start of the regular season for contract promises. Buffer scales down when using shorter custom league schedules. That's great. So if I promise you power play one or something and game one of the season, I'm not doing that. You don't need to demand a trade yet. You can give a five game buffer. Good. Okay. That's nice. Improved tuning for contract negotiations, preseason focus and off season development conversations. Okay. And added additional info widgets within conversations and the contract negotiation flow. I'm not sure what that means, honestly. So the biggest thing, these are, these are nice, but the biggest thing I'm not seeing is that when you're in negotiations with a player and you promise them a certain promise, whatever power play one first line time, whatever it might be. And then that player does not sign the, the extension with you. They're still expecting to have those promises be met. So if I go to a player who's on an expiring contract and I say, Hey, I want to extend you for eight years. I'll give you power play one. Here's my contract offer, blah, blah, blah. And they decline that offer they'll still expect me to follow through with the promises that that extension would have brought right now in this previous contract that hasn't yet expired. That issue, according to this, it looks like has not yet been fixed. So I'd say that's something that definitely needs to be touched upon in the next um, patch. But this is a nice show to say, okay, at least they're awake, at least they're noticing that things aren't perfectly right. I don't mind. They just put in a new system. It's a new game. I don't mind. If the patches come, I don't mind. Don't try and pretend like the problems don't exist, as have you been seeing for uh, dozens of problems over the last decade. If there's a problem, no problem. Put a patch, fix it, move on. No hard feelings, but at least show me that you're awake and there's somebody working and the lights are on at the studio for a reason. And one more conversation related thing to be fixed I'm not seeing here would be the X factor goals that you can set at the start of the season with the player. I'm not sure if it's for multiple X factors, but at least for me with the quick draw X factor, for example, for face off wins, you tell a player, you give them a goal, win whatever, 750 face offs. And then after they win, like not even a hundred face offs, after a few weeks into the season, they already have the quick draw X factor on their player. So I'm not sure if that's, like I said, multiple X factors with goals, assists, plus minus block shots, or if it's just for the face-offs. But I've seen that happen a couple times where I give them a goal to hit by the end of the season. And within a couple of weeks when they're still like only one tenth of the way there, they've already met it and they have the X factor. So that's another thing that I would see, that I'd want to see fixed in a future patch for these conversations. World of Chell, there's a ton here. I don't play any World of Chell, so feel free to pause and read any of these. Looks like there's a lot of like invite a player, store stuff, uh, images. Yeah, I'm seeing the word store a lot. So World of Chell, I don't play this at all, but it looks like there's a lot of fixed here. I see the word fixed everywhere, so that's great. So fix, 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 fix. Rare crash, rare crash, fix, 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 fix. For presentations for the cameras, fixed cameras looking at the wrong bench during a hat trick celebration. Okay, that's good. Added more camera variation in the post game menu replays gotcha grudge match fixed gram grammatical bug mm, bug or just someone putting a typo let's be honest that showed zero wins as zero win team shots in the grudge match intro have been updated for improved variety and fixes to handedness bugs okay broadcast fixed bug where goal scorer celebration ends early when cutting to big game ending nis fixed bug where teammates do not properly celebrate after scoring a goal in ot so you're telling me that now i can't uh, someone's gonna score a goal and it won't just be players like bending over their sticks and like skating like head first into the corner okay i look forward to seeing that too fixed issue where the post goal group hug has a broken player when scoring with an extra attacker on the ice uh, example pulled goalie okay fix an issue where the sync screen wipe stays up until the next face off when a post goal group hug is skipped fix an issue where the wrong team's head coach was being displayed during moments of coach dissatisfaction fix an issue with the digital dashers where the scoring player's name wasn't appearing post goal 
general improvement to the smoothness of transition when transitioning from gameplay to NIS, and fixed a bug in one's eliminator where the OT countdown SFX would continually trigger. Okay, so that's I would say these are some positives. Replays fixed an issue that showed a goal replay after stoppages for saves and penalties, and fixed an issue to properly show the right X factor ability in post goal sizzle replays. It was incorrectly showing the zone ability instead of the grudge ability. All right. Menus. I want to see improved speed by 400%, but we see fix an issue that was causing user customized player portal portraits to appear rotated in menus. That's not what I wanted to see. So this patch is huge. Look at all the things that are being fixed in this patch. I appreciate it very much. Don't get me wrong. I am very appreciative, but the biggest issue with NHL 25 in and out of franchise mode is menu speed. We got to have those menus fixed. It is incredible that in a game that's on next gen consoles in the year 2024, we are having the speed of the PlayStation, not PlayStation 2, 3, 4, the PlayStation. Be a pro. I'm surprised they even remember that it existed. Fixed an issue where conversations with Utah front office staff refer references another club, I guess, Phoenix or Arizona, I should say. Flex camera logic changes uh, the flex camera. So essentially when a player scores a goal and it like the lights go out and it zooms in on the player doing the celebration, that's what a flex celebration is. So auto flex celebrations no longer occur for humans or CPU. They can only be activated manually by human users hitting Y or triangle immediately after a goal. Great news. Don't need to suffer through that anymore. Hockey Ultimate Team, another mode that I don't play, but please feel free to read through these. Issues with objectives and wildcard stuff, XP path feedback, art players, fixed an issue where EA Sports logo is being displayed on the Kelowna Rockets alternate jersey, okay. Fixed hairstyle 18, blah, blah, blah. This is a major patch. we got to give it to them. Updated logos on the hoodie during the coach conversation for the Ducks, Kings, and Utah. So, <laughs> what? How didn't you fix that? The Ducks, the Kings, and Utah have new logos and you didn't update the logos on the hoodie of the players that they'd be wearing in Be A Pro? No, says Pippa, it can't be. Present, like, I, I can't, I'm glad it's fixed, but I can't believe that the majority of these things were not caught before the game came out. Again, for like the fourth time, I'm appreciative, but I also can't believe it. Presentation, Heckler now faces the right direction, no longer clipping through overlay during ease, okay. Animations... In post Stanley Cup final handshake, facial smile animation is no longer broken. Okay, good. <laughs> I look forward to seeing that. Environments. Face off light shows. Crowd with parkas are no longer missing hair. <laughs> Player name indicators are now in the correct position. Okay, stability. Fix an issue where if the game was on for an extended period, a crash would occasionally occur. <laughs> All right, good on you, EA. Updated center ice art for a bunch of teams. Uniforms for a ton of teams. Look at this. Home and away, third jerseys. But how is this not updated before? Yeah, ton of stuff. Okay, so this video was actually, it wasn't a super long video, but it was way longer than I thought it would be. There are a ton of fixes in this patch. I was reading through it for the first time here with all of you reacting live. That's what I got to say about it. So my thoughts on the coaches... It's great, but I don't know why it's happening in November. Why couldn't it happen in at release? Or why not just hang on to it until NHL 26 so that everyone can enjoy it, not just people who are starting with new rosters today. If I spent the last month, here I am, not me, but I'm saying I'm here I am, I'm a father of three, working a nine to five, I'm working full time, taking my kid to the rink, I have just 30 minutes to breathe from 11 to 11.30 p.m. before I go to bed and I wake up for my job tomorrow at 5 a.m., I have just 30 minutes to tweak my roster. I've been doing that for five weeks. And then, bang, you want real coaches? Start from scratch. So why can't it just be put into the game itself? Why do you need the update? I guess I don't understand the nuances of it all, but just throwing it out there, I wish it would have been from launch or almost would have said, just wait until NHL 26. But we have it now. I'm happy for it. I look forward to being able to actually enjoy utilizing it when I start my next franchise mode series, which will actually be soon, but not for the Islanders one. Aside from that, a ton of supposed, quote, fixes. I hope that they actually are fixes, especially for some of the CPU letting the puck in the defensive zone just sit there, skating backwards when they should be attacking, uh, conversations. There's a lot of things that have been fixed, but still much more to go. So that's why I said there's still a lot to be desired. The menu speed, the conversations, there's still, but especially the menu speed, oh my goodness. There's still more to be patched in HL 25.
And something that I didn't even mention was, yes, the coaches are in the game, but some of these faces are rough, man. Like Tortorella, okay, I can kind of make it out. And then if you show me uh, Sheldon Keefe, okay, Craig Berube, I, I see Craig Berube, but it just, he doesn't look like a person i don't quite get what's going on with like the neck and whatever and then look at patrick wah come on this is patrick wah so there's only 32 there's only 32 of them and you couldn't just get it a little bit more in game to, but that's maybe just me being too picky i'm just saying i'm just saying so now i want to hear what do you have to say what do you think about this patch what do you think about coaching in franchise mode what do you think about it happening now as well on november 4th leave me all your thoughts down here on youtube or over in the discord server link in the description as always we're always discussing more franchise mode and sports in there we'd love to have you join the team as i said at the beginning subscribe if you haven't already to join our franchise mode series our career simulations and much more happening here on the channel nhl 25 news guides and all the things to do with this game which will hopefully continue to get better as more patches come out so thanks for listening looking forward to reading your thoughts and seeing you once again in the next one